Good morning, everybody. As you can see, I have a special visitor, Poppy. She thinks she has to be involved in the sermon today. I'm so excited I can be here and bring you guys all of this wonderful lessons. I know you're missing church. I know you're missing being there with your friends and hanging out. I miss everybody too, but I am glad that I can get with you guys a little bit every morning and still teach you about God's love. All right, it's time for you to get down, Poppy. All right, let's go ahead and get started then. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you're in charge during this coronavirus, Lord, and everything's going to work out in your time. Just be with us today, Lord, as we worship you. We sing some songs. We learn a little bit more about your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to have Lily come on up, and she's going to lead us in some worship. We have a new song today. Um, before we click on the song, we are going to do this song for the next four weeks of our animal series. And as you watch the video, you're going to see all different kinds of animals. Um, some are a little weird and strange looking. Some you'll recognize right away, but they're all part of God's beautiful creation. And in the song, we're going to teach you a couple of the emotion, emo, emotions, excuse me, emotions today for you to learn, and then next week we'll add a few more. But it's a pretty easy song, so after you sing it, you'll probably have it done by the end of this day. All right, so let's show some emotions, Lily. Okay, first part is all around the world. Um, Don't get too dizzy. Then, we're like knowing and looking. Yeah, Jesus is looking for the people, and then you do the love, and then it's talking about everybody. So you gotta raise your hands up nice and long, and then when it's strong, you make these fists. Strong kind of love that Jesus has. For and we us. have the amazing part where you like pump up like you're raising God. It's amazing. Some high fives. He's amazing. So, so those are the simple, basically ones we want you to try to learn today, and then we'll add the other few next week. So let's go ahead and get started with our worship song. Lost her. Wait, no, never mind. I think it's that.
is definitely so amazing and he loves us very much. Cassie's going to come on up and she's going to introduce our animal for this week. So today our animal is coming up on the screen, rhinoceros. Cassie's going to tell us some facts and show us some pictures and then we're going to listen to a fun song about rhinos. One of the largest and most fearsome looking creatures on earth is the mighty rhinoceros. Rhinos are huge powerful creatures, some of which can grow as long as 15 feet and weigh as much as 7,000 pounds. Whoa! There are five species still living on Earth, and they range from Af Africa to Southeast Asia. They have their differences, but they all share one trait in common, their horns. Some rhinos only have one, but some have two. Two horns. But all rhinos have horns that are sharp, powerful, and deadly. If you look at a rhino's anatomy, you'll see it's built for destruction. Their entire body is machine designed to allow the rhino to put that horn into devastating use. Rhinos are very endangered, largely because of their horns, and efforts are underway to protect these beautiful creatures. It's sad that their one distinguishing characteristic is also the reason that they are hunted and killed. And it would truly be a shame to see them vanish. Rhinos need help, our help, if they are to survive. And we look at some of the pictures of our rhinos up there on the screen. You can see those big horns. And the rhinos that I selected, they all have two horns here in the picture. You can see they're really, really big one. Cassie was talking about that can be dangerous because that's how they help protect themselves and get prey. And then they have their smaller horn here. Some rhinos, you talked about five species. Some are brown like, some are more gray, and they're like an orangier color from the mud. Here. They're not orange rhinos, but they roll around in the mud to keep the sun from burning their skin. So you can see the baby there. It's kind of small right now, but they do get pretty big. Not quite as big as the elephant, but they're still pretty big. So isn't that a pretty amazing animal? Here comes our rhino song. Rhino, everybody knows. You got one tail, four feet, twelve toes. Mr. Rhino. Look what grows, two big horns on the tip of your nose. Now you got three friends, Mr. Rhinoceros, elephant, buffalo, and hippopotamus. You got two bad eyes, but you're not deaf. In Africa and Asia, there's not many of you left, Mr. Rhino. Everybody knows you got one tail, four feet, twelve toes. Mr. Rhino, look what grows. Two big horns on the tip of your nose. Five, six, seven makes a herd. And on your back rides a white tip bird. Eight, nine, ten, you ain't a ton. But you're fast as a zebra when you're on the run. Mr. Rhino, everybody knows You got one tail, four feet, twelve toes Mr. Rhino, but look what grows Two big horns on the tip of your Bunch. You're the one and only, as sure as you're born, bigger and better than a unicorn. Mr. Rhino, everybody knows, you got one tail, four feet, twelve toes. Mr. Rhino, look what grows, two big horns on the tip of your nose. I said two big horns on the tip of your nose. So that rhino song gave us a few more rhino facts, like the number of toes they have. We have 10 toes, and rhinos had how many toes? 12. 12 toes. So I wonder if they have four feet. 
How many toes do they have on each foot? Mm, you gotta do some math. I know Three. you preteens can get this. Three. Three. Three toes per foot. Very good. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started with our lesson today. Today, our story is found in Joshua. That's in the New Testament. I mean, Old Testament. Sorry. In the Old Testament, those sparkies, you should know where this is at. So say your books and turn to Joshua in your Bible. And today's title is The Fall of Jericho. So just as God gave rhinos horns to protect them, he also takes care of us. There are times when all of us could use a little help. Sometimes we have battles to fight that we can't win on our own. Thankfully, we have a God who loves us and is powerful enough to win in any battle. God fought many battles and won many victories in the Old Testament for Israel, his people. But the one battle I want to focus on today is the Battle of Jericho. Jericho was a rich, powerful city that stood between the Israelites and their new homeland. It was an impenetrable city surrounded by a great wall. And here we gave you a little sampling of what the wall might look like. It wasn't built of wood, but it was built of stone and it was really high, a lot higher than this. Remember, this is just a miniature model, but it was really tall and high and it surrounded the whole city. And just for fun, we put a little rhino on top. No, they didn't have rhinos guarding their walls, but maybe if they did, it would have helped. You think? Maybe, but remember, God is all powerful, so even rhinos can't stop God's purpose and plan. So God's going to use an unlikely weapon, and no, it's not rhinos, but that might be a good guess if you're thinking that, because they do have those powerful horns, and maybe they could have busted through the walls, but the rhinos weren't on God's side either. God is going to use something different to bring down the walls of Jericho. So we're going to watch this little video story. They're going to draw in the video and tell you the story of Jericho. Enjoy! In the Old Testament, God picked out a great place for his people to live. But, long story short, they ended up in Egypt for 400 years instead. God led his people back to this land he promised to give them. But there was a problem. Other people moved in while God's people were gone. God picked a man named Joshua to be the leader of Israel. He had watched Moses lead God's people for years. So he learned to go when God said go and stay when God said stay. Joshua got really good at obeying God in the little things and in the big things by obeying his leader Moses. God gave Joshua very specific directions on how to defeat the people who were living in God's promised land. It wasn't a normal kind of battle plan at all, but Joshua trusted God so much that he was ready to obey no matter what God asked. The first enemy city they came to was Jericho. Jericho had a big tall wall that protected the city. God told Joshua to line up all of God's people, the Israelites, and march around the city once a day for six days. Then on the seventh day, they were to march around the city seven times. No fighting, no yelling, just marching. So Joshua did just what God said. He led all of the people to line up and obey God too. Even though this plan sounded crazy, and even though the walls of the city were big and tall, Joshua obeyed what God told him to do. On the first day, they marched around the city's big tall wall. No fighting, no yelling, just marching. On the second day, they marched around the city's big tall wall. No fighting, no yelling, just marching. On the third day, they marched around the city's big tall wall. No fighting, no yelling, just marching. You get the picture, right? Same thing on the fourth day, and the fifth day, and the sixth day. It seemed like nothing was happening. Jericho's big tall wall was still big and tall. On the seventh day, God told Joshua to march around the city seven times. This time, they blew their trumpets and yelled. And guess what? They saw that big tall wall fall. It was a miracle. Because of Joshua's great obedience, the people of Israel obeyed God's instructions too, and God destroyed the big tall wall of Jericho. Joshua continued to obey God in the little things, 
and in the big things. He trusted God no matter what. He led God's people into the promised land, and God made Joshua into a mighty leader. You can read about him in his very own book of the Bible, Joshua. That was a really cool video. It summed up the story of Joshua and Jericho from the Bible. And what happened? Did a rhino smash the wall in that story? No. God had them march around several days doing nothing. And on the seventh day when they marched, they played trumpets. Doo -doo -doo -doo! And then the walls came tumbling down and they defeated the city. One cool thing I liked about the video and the story of Joshua was that he trusted God. Here he is, this leader that took over from Moses, but he had to love and trust God. And the plan might seem kind of silly, right? Marching around the city, um, not doing anything, but silence. The people probably thought they were crazy because they weren't fighting, they weren't shouting, they were just marching. That, and then they went back to their camp. Next day, got up and done the same thing. But on the seventh day, when they played their music instruments and marched and blew their horns, the walls came down. Did you catch that connection? The priests blew their horns as they traveled around the city. That was all God needed to topple the walls of Jericho and hand it over to the people. So it wasn't a big, strong rhino, but it was a horn or like a trumpet type of thing that they blew. God's weapons are not like our weapons. More often than not, God uses means that we would never think of to fight his battles. When people persecute his church around the world, God uses the compassion and humility of the Christians who are persecuted and imprisoned to show their captors that their faith is real and he is the one true God. God can work a similar miracle in your lives. Whatever walls you may face, God has a way for you to tear them down. We're not talking about real walls. We're talking about battles or struggles or hard things you're going through. Maybe you have a problem with a friend or a family member. Maybe somebody's bullying you. You can tear down the walls and restore your relationship with your family and friends. You can pray to God and tell him about the bully and seek someone to help. God can help us tear down the walls. Maybe you're struggling with a sin that has you trapped. Give that struggle to God and let him tear down the walls of sin and set you free. Maybe there's a goal you can't reach because some obstacle is in your way. Give the struggle to God and pray for a miracle. God can tear down those walls and give you victory, just like he did in the city with the city of Jericho. The power of the Almighty God that fought Jericho is available to all of us. Not just the adults, but the kids too. Anybody who believes in Jesus can have the same power. He may not fight the way we want him to fight with punching and fists or weapons, but God has a special way of doing things. He knows what is best for us and he will never ever let us down if, here's the word again, trust him just like Joshua. We have to trust and love God and he will fight our battles. Give your battles to the Lord today and let him tear down your walls so you can have victory. Our next little thing we're going to do is our trivia quiz. So let's see who was listening to the video, who was- In the Old Testament, God- right, Not the video again, we already had that. Um, we're going to answer some questions to see if you were listening to the video and the review. Here we go. Who was the leader of Israel when they faced Jericho? Was it A, Moses, B, Aaron, C, Joshua? These were all great leaders, but who helped with Jericho? Joshua. Joshua, that is correct. Joshua did. Okay, next question. Who planned the attack on Jericho? Was it God? Was it Joshua or Moses? This is kind of tricky. A, B, or C? A. It is God. Yes, Joshua fought in the battle, but it was God. 
Okay, number three. How many times did the Israelites circle the city on the seventh day? Think about the seventh day. How many times did they circle? Was it A, one day, B, five days, or C, seven days? Hmm. Don't get confused with the other days. The seventh day. Seven. Let's check out the answer. Seven days is correct. Good job, guys. Next question. What did the priests do as they marched around on the seventh day? Remember, they didn't have rhinos, so we have to look at these choices. Did A, did they pray? B, did they blow on their horns? Kind of like we think about trumpets, but did they play on their special horns? Or C, did they sing? What did they do? Hmm. I think it was B. B, doo -doo -doo -doo. they blew on their special horns. Very good. Number five, what happened when the Israelites shouted? So they blew their horns, but they also shouted and cheered. Did A, Jericho surrendered, that means the people gave up? Or B, the gates flew open magically? Or C, did the walls go tumbling down? The walls came tumbling down. Very good, <laughs> and the walls came tumbling down. That was our last question. Before we did this song, there's a little series called Veggie Tales, and they take the Bible stories and they keep the true facts of the story, but they also add some funny little things that didn't necessarily happen in the Bible study. It just helps you remember the story. It doesn't change the meaning of it, but it's just kind of funny things. Like you'll see, um, we're singing the regular song of Joshua, but the Veggie Tale movies in the background. And of course, we know vegetables didn't march around the walls. It was people. Vegetables. And you'll see slushies dropping on their head. The Jericho people didn't drop slushies on their head. I'm sure they threw things or used other weapons, but it wasn't slushies. But those fun kind of things help us remember the story. So enjoy this Veggie Tale uh, background with the Joshua song. <laughs> like seeing some of those scenes um, of the veggie tales you can google on YouTube Joshua and the big wall and the whole little veggie tale movie is on there I think you'd really like it it's kind of funny but you learn some more things about Joshua and Jericho so check it out Josh and the big wall on veg, uh, veggie tales on YouTube 
All right, next we're going to get ready to do our memory verse. We still have the same memory verse. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Zechariah 4, 6b. So not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Zechariah 4, 6b. So we're going to go ahead and um, listen to our song. Lily, come on up. today because we're going to, Lily and I are going to show you another way to work on your memory verse. So it's where you, we're going to go back to the memory verse screen and it's where we're going to show you, I'll say one word, Lily says one word. So it's kind of like a tag team effort. So let's well, go back to the memory verse for a minute, please. going the wrong way. That's okay. okay. All right, here we go. Not. By. Might. Not. By. Power, but by my spirit says the Lord, oh, Lord Almighty, <laughs> Zechariah four six. B. All right, let's try that one more time. Okay. You ready? Not by might, not by power says. Oh wait, oh. I forgot one. But <laughs> by my spirit says the Lord Almighty. Zechariah for six. Please. So this is a fun thing you can do with your siblings or your parents to help you memorize the verse. Do it a couple times and then try to say it on your own. And if you guys want to uh, email me or call me, if you want to say your memory verse to me at any time, we're going to have a special prizes for those who say their memory verse at the end of our unit. We have three more weeks, three more amazing animals to do that God has created. So you have plenty of time to work on your memory verse, but email me or call me or text me, have your parents reach out if you're ready to say your memory verse from Zachariah. All right, today's bottom line that I want you to remember, God can win our victories for us. So no matter what you're going through, any battle, any tough time, any strategy, struggles, I mean, God has a strategy. He can help you win. So God can win our victories for us. All right, next week, come on back. We're going to do monkeys. There's all different kinds of monkeys to look at. So we'll see you next week. Miss y'all. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a great week.